Hello, welcome everybody to the now rebranded Data Geek Karting. I realised during my uh, last trip to Club 100 at the weekend, uh, it was great to catch up with everyone by the way, that I hadn't made a video for a while and quite frankly I had to own up to having bought myself a new set of wheels, which you can see on screen. So this is a, my new senior Rotax car, all 30 horsepower odd, well, possibly, maybe, uh, <laughs> which I've, uh, I've taken out a couple of times now. Uh, since I bought it last December and I'm having a lot of fun with uh, but anyway before I uh, get into the uh, guts of this year's fun I thought I'd make a, a bit of a review video of, of last year's Club 100 action I was pretty lucky last year Club 100 went to lots of different places and I was lucky enough to make at least one meeting at most of their tracks I think the only one I missed was Alloy Park, so you know, plans for the future, and um, yeah, be all good. So, what I'm planning on doing with this video is I'm just going to uh, review the taking my fastest lap from uh, each each visit, uh, talk about the tracks, what I like about them, what I don't like about them, you know, how bumper they are, how, <laughs> how easy or not easy I find them, you know, compare that to the fastest lap of the session. And with any luck, get myself some pointers about you know what I could do better now that I've taken a bit of a step up in uh, horsepower and grip. So without further ado. So first up, PFI. It's back uh, racing BKC and the Intermediate Competition. It's a great track this, very smooth, lots of fast bits. Lots of straightaways to get your foot back. So into the lap, we've got this long left hander. So you power understeer past that first apex into a tiny braking zone, crossing the bridge. Right hander down the hill into a straightaway. So a bit of a chance to get back up to full speed. Picking the brake point is important here to carry as much speed through the corner, which don't really hit the apex. So I think I'm under broken there, going into the corner. Again, up to full speed, left hander, slightly close to the apex that time, but still not running quite wide enough, so not carrying enough speed from the corner. So, entering into the uh, third part of the lap, so the technical bit, so we've got this 90 degree right hander leading into a complex with really late apex. Didn't get this right in one to two days, so you're for that second cone or just past it as you determine to that left hander without running wide, which of course I do. And then back onto the main straight, up to full speed, back on the bridge. So yeah, not the greatest lap. Uh, it's 1.13.3, which is about two seconds down from the fastest of the session. So looking forward to going back there and smashing that lap top. So next up was Shannington. It's actually my second trip here with the uh, Club 100 after being on BKC earlier in the year. Again, really nice track, very smooth, lots of textbook sections, straightaways to get your uh, uh, to get your cart restabilized for the next bit. So into the lap, so we've got this first left, right, left complex, quite quick. Again, trying to watch out for track limits on the way out of this turn. And uh, yeah, I'll see a nice, uh, decent line for you there. Obviously into the hairpin now. Try to choose your braking point nicely so you hit the apex right in the middle and don't run too wide. Obviously, uh, to hold off from even thinking about going over that curb. Into the chicane section, bit left hander here, and so it's one of those deceptive ones where you can run out to the right because there's enough room. So it's straight away running into this kind of long right hander. Again, it's picking the brake point, I'd say just before those chevrons. Trying to hit the apex right that last cone so you get straight into the left. Nice exit, really key cut overtaking zone. And that was 55.7, which was about a second shy of the fastest of the session. Done better than that since then, so quite happy. Anyway, it was a great day, brilliant track, love it. So, I want to land, right? So I was here for the, the 
final round of the BUKC Inters competition and I've got to be honest, I didn't really get on with this track. I think it might have had something to do with the fact that it's bumpy as hell, but it could also be the fact, well, I mean, clearly other people are having a really fine time because my lap time is two seconds down on the fastest of the day, which was pretty respectable. I think it was kind of, wow, you know, first time. And, um, I mean, the, the, I think the thing that really bothered me is that, okay, you might be able to see these little white marks popping up all over the place. Now, these were on the track, clearly denoting the race line. But quite frankly, I couldn't actually turn that into any lap time. Especially this corner we're coming into now. Bumpy as hell, no grip. Those things there are metal, so they've got extra. Absolutely absurd. Anyway. <laughs> Here we go, round the final corner. Pretty much the only bit that I knew how to do well, which was the straight bit at the end, into the final hairpin. Braking zone, you know, about where those tyres starts, and uh, yeah, across the line to finish. And that was 54-1, which was over two seconds down on the best of the, de of the session, which was really embarrassing. Anyway, aiming to go back and smash that lap time. Let's see how that goes. GYG's next. North Wales' finest track. Again, a bit of a bumpy number, but a really interesting track. Got lots of technical sections, uphills, downhills. Ugh, only thing that's missing is a roller coaster, really. Uh, it's my first time taking part in the, I think it was my first SP60 event, actually. Um, yeah, it was a lot interesting, a lot of higher, well, a lot of more experienced drivers than in the experience. Anyway, so into the lap, it's got a straight bit. So this coming over the brow into this braking zone was a bit brown trouser type, but you know, no one really went over that bit. You'd think that they would, but no they didn't. Anyway, long left hander, double apex hitting the apex there and at the end it's the end. And then up the hill into the long right hander. Again, trying to cruise your way around to your right on the right hand side of this bit of the track into the complex. So this is basically lots of lefts and rights and rights and lefts. God knows when it ends, and quite frankly, I couldn't get that one right. Lap ended up being 50.9 second, 1.1 seconds down on the fastest. But it's a great track, really looking forward to going back there. It's just such a shame it's so far from my house. Okay, so next up we've got Buckmore Park. Oh, I love Park, especially in the dry. It's an absolute pleasure in the dry. Oh, look at that killer overtaking me. It's a gunner. Before turning left up the hill. I, I love Buckmore in the dry just as much as I hate it in the wet. The last race of the season, Club 100 was at Buckmore. Absolutely torrential rain. Absolutely two and a half hours of hell as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, it's a lap. Really good, really fast right hand on that first one, and then into the hairpins. Keeping up with uh, Garrett, Garrett pretty well here. See into the uh, S's. This is where you find out why it's called a roller coaster. Obviously, down this hill, trying to turn in, trying to be as close to this barrier as possible, getting into the braking zone for the right hander. Up the hill into Garner. Key overtaking zone just there. Good, good to get a good exit out of that out of this corner because it yeah, really affects your lap time going up the hill. A bit more better, a slightly better exit. Uh, lap ended up being 47.5, which was about 0.9 seconds down on the best of the session. Again, really great day. Looking forward to going back there. Again, just a shame it's so far from where I live. Oh, what's that? Demonstrating the perils of half an overtake there. <laughs> so, onto Wilton. As you can tell from all the graphics, this was one of the best races I've ever had with Club 100. So I wanted the video to be nice and polished. It took ages though, probably not going to do it again. Uh, but yeah, really good day, nice and hot, middle of June. Anyway, into the lap, hug in the corner at Oblivion, power oversteer through uh, Crook and then up the hill into Chris up towards Christmas. Trying to put your braking zone as late as possible up the hill. Seemed to be able to get the cars to run really wide that day. It seemed to not really hamper the lap time, but there you go. It doesn't normally happen. 
picking the breaking point into Asprey so you can hit the apex right on the cone, running wide naturally. Into the left handers, again carrying enough speed through here to carry yourself across the right line. And then picking your breaking point, turning so you can hit a nice late apex there before running onto the back straight. Now breaking on the Marshall post into the boot, mashing across that curve, hitting the first apex, missing the second, then turn it in nice and sharply so you can just about miss the monster curve. Oh, round trousers time. Lap ended up being 54.5, only half a second down on the best of the day, one of the best I've ever done. Nice. So just in case any of you are thinking that I'm saccharine and saying how lovely tracks all the tracks are, and the next up is Bayford Meadows, which is a track I've really not got on with or will commit to a slight satisfaction going to this last corner and getting the breaking zone right. It's really satisfying coming out here and slipping in the right. Although I have realised the reason why I don't get on with this track, it's basically because I'm not fit and not strong, which is something I'm trying to address right now uh, because I've bought the new uh, higher powered uh, senior car. It's this infield section, it's just constantly on the left, and you've got hardly any time to resettle the car. And you're going into the right, and then almost the most annoying left hander on the track into a straightaway, which, quite frankly, they have never managed to do right. Now, granted, these two long corners can be quite satisfying, but you get the, um, the switchback right, that switchback moment right. You and then, of course, a bit really satisfying coming to this last corner. It's a little bit of a hop just as you hit the ground on the brakes across the line. Now, this lap was 55.3, 1.2 seconds down on the best of the session. Just got to improve my fitness, so there is to say. So, just one week later, I was off to Lid. Absolutely baking hot day. This is the second time I've been to Lid, and then was a bacon up there as well. It seems to be the only weather they get again. Anyway, great track, lots of interesting sections. Uh, not a high stress track though. Anyway, into the lap, so obviously first bus stop. Trying to uh, maintain as little curve as possible through those ones. Second bus stop, obviously got those tyre walk. And again, it's very important to get a good exit out of this one because you're heading into a fast right hander. Hardly any break there at all. Now you're into the sweeping kind of chicane section, going up and down the hill, trying to uh, hug this curve here as much as possible, all the way around before onto the back straight. Get the car settled and up to full speed before picking your braking zone to trail brake into the right hander, hitting the apex late here, nice and close towards the end of the lap. Lap ended up being 45.2 about half a second down on the session best. An improvement on my last visit, so happy. So, uh, ninth, my ninth track of the season, and yet another new one to add to my collection. This is Rye House. Um, when I looked at a map of Rye House, I thought, wow, amazing, similar it looks to Buckmore Park. When we got there, it's flat as a pancake. So I was ba basically expecting Buckmore, but you know, with the chicanes and the uh, hairpins changed round and flat, but it's not really like Buckwall because the uh, the certain bits of it that are a lot more expansive. Like it's a lot kind of bigger, than and the hairpins are a lot sharper, really sharp, just narrowly missing those barriers. Huge breaking zones that last week, and it's a very wide runoff here onto these bricks that really don't have any grip at all. And I, I, I believe that the surface has been redone quite extensively for my first ever visit I mean other people have been there before and said how bumpy it was but really it was a it was a real pleasure to be on such a smooth track so this lap was 44.08 which was about uh, second down on the fastest of the session as it was my first go very happy with that and uh, yeah what can I say looking forward to coming back and finally, last but not least, we reach Clay Pigeon now in October. And yeah, this is the another first for me, uh, my last dry outing of the season. This is Clay Pigeon, uh, so let's get into the lab. 
obviously in the middle of a track coming into this first left hander but really struggled to know how pedantic to be about sticking over to the left and then trying to carry as much speed round as possible through the double right hand of the chicane obviously into the hairpin now but it's up the hill so yeah again struggle with the drape uh, to find the right breaking point there and then getting over again didn't know how far to take it back over to the right side of the track before going through this long left hander up the hill uh, and then it's just a matter of carrying as much speed through those turns as possible it's all very long turns didn't want to go too far off the track there and across the line now this lap was 42.4 which was uh, 0.7 seconds slower than the fastest of the day again as it was a, you know, another first very happy with that uh, it was a great track very smooth I'm looking forward to going back so that's it for last year's karting fun uh, so just to conclude I'm just putting all the lap times so all the data that I've collected from last year's Club 100 running. And uh, having a look at the deltas, obviously there's a pretty decent spread between one and say three and a half percent. At that level, I don't suspect I'm gonna win any prizes. I think my main takeaways are that I've got to really concentrate on my fitness. I've got to really try and find the line through the corners, especially on the bumpy tracks, that kind of keeps the cart settled and uh, try not to, um, I mean, these carts understeer like crazy, but try not to have to do any back steering through the corners. Anyway, if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching and uh, hopefully see you in the next one.